Okay, good evening. Welcome to the Purple Onion, North Beach, San Francisco, 2012. Thank you for coming out tonight and being here and sharing in an historic evening. We're going to have some laughs and some tears and some fun and, 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 and uh, thanks for being here and thanks for getting elbow to elbow with us in this tiny room the way comedy is meant to be under under the under the surface of the earth all jammed in together hot and sweaty and enjoying yourself so my name is jim i'm going to host you through the entire night here and um i uh, i used to live in san francisco but we came to an arrangement and we realized i couldn't afford to live here anymore and i took myself down to los angeles but yeah yeah i know but i'm one of the few people who moved there that didn't become famous or thin so uh yes i'm keeping it real I love being back in, because people care. I, you walk down the street, there's always some young person with a clipboard that wants your time and your money. But people care, they really, that's why I forgot about people in San Francisco, they care about everything. And I've lived in LA uh, for a couple of years now and, and I only care about myself. I adapted very well, but it's nice to be reminded of it here, but it's a beautiful city. I, I was here a, a couple of months ago and I was walking around the Embarcadero and I, it, was, it was about sunset and um, I, had a, I had a coffee. And this chap comes up to me, and, and every time somebody comes up, you expect they're going to hit you up for a smoke or some cash or whatever. You never quite know. And this, this gentleman, older fella, came up, and he, he comes up to me, and he says, is your coffee warm? <laughs> and I was not quite expecting that, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, that response from him. And I said, yeah, it's, it's not too bad. It's okay. And he went, good. And he walked off. <laughs> And I went, that's what I miss about San Francisco, the weird random stuff that happens like that. Because I travel all over and nobody's ever cared about the temperature of my coffee. Wherever I go, I just met the, the warm beverage ambassador. And that's what's brilliant about San Francisco. It's a great city to be in and uh, I miss it very much because it's anything goes here. You can do whatever you want, right? You can, you can have sexual relations with anybody you're able to talk into it. Um, <laughs> you can worship anything you want, follow any agenda at all. Just, just bring a jacket um, <laughs> because it's nice now, but it's going to be freezing in about 12 minutes. So get ready for that. So I, I'm not originally from here. When, when I'm, I'm originally from Australia which is a lovely place. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, cheers. And uh, uh, I was just back there. I went, I went back to visit for a month because it's, it's beautiful but dangerous. It's like the furthest place in the world. Getting to Australia, it's like a mission to Mars, right? You, you fly for months. You get on a plane and, and you just fly and you land. It's like waking up out of a coma. You're like, what year is it? Where am I? How long have I been out? You know, and you, you try to move. You try to step outside and your legs are wobbly because you haven't used them in, in, a, in a couple of months. And you get outside and the danger begins right the, the, there's no ozone to protect you from the elements anymore so the sun burns your clothes off to a speedo <laughs> and there you are ready to burn because <laughs> it's sunny because it's, it's the sunniest place on earth and that's why it was a brilliant idea to have us settled by the english the whitest people in the world <laughs> that's what's great about the english so they, they said let's get this paleness out there shall we they went to australia they probably burst into flames when they stepped off the ship just Somebody chucked in a shrimp. That was the earliest Barbie we ever had. I mean, look at me. I was there for a month and I'm still white. I, I am a tan line. Look at me, man. I have, the, I have the pale, fragile skin of a young girl in a Victorian novel who is dying of consumption. I'm, I'm to be played by Kira Knightley in a movie. I, and I have sun damage in my eye, right? If you're ever back at my hotel room later on tonight, staring into this eye, wondering why it's all red, I have sun damage, because nobody ever says put some sunblock on your eyeball <laughs> while you're out and about in Australia. So when I'm out, I have to wear big gigantic sunglasses, big full face, wrap around, sunnies like no light can get in. It looks like I'm going welding with Bono every day when I'm out. <laughs> but San Francisco, I have family history in San Francisco. My great grandfather survived the 1906 earthquake of San Francisco. He, um, yeah, he... He lived in England and he, um, he, that's not why he survived. <laughs> that was a pause, that wasn't a plan, right? Uh, I'll give you some family history. My great granddad left England, moved to Australia. Not a convict, um, not a pro We did have one convict in the family, a counterfeiter. The only one in my family who made money and it was the wrong way. That's, uh, that's a true story. But, but my great grandfather, my dad's grandfather, he left England, he was an alcoholic, right? And, uh, and his family paid him to leave. They said, look, you're a drunken bastard. 
here's some cash. We need you to piss off and never, ever come back. <laughs> they paid him to leave. And that's the brilliant, brilliant of it, right? When you drink too much for English people, <laughs> you are Australian. <laughs> that's the breakdown. <laughs> They got all their, their drunky people and criminals, they put them on an island in the South Pacific and then they gave them bouncy animals to scare them while they were drunk. <laughs> Something weird just hopped by, mate. I'll have another beer. <laughs> but I live in, I've lived in California for a long time, so I'm, I'm, I, I see the warnings all the time. They warn you, get ready for an earthquake. I love that, like you can get ready, like there's some exercise you should be doing. <laughs> Getting ready for an earthquake, man. <laughs> Throw the couch at me, try and knock me over. <laughs> building up a tolerance to bricks and ceilings. Because <laughs> it's all scary, because we see it on the new, the tsunami footage. Oh, my, I sleep in my clothes every night with floaties on. <laughs> I'm in an air mattress, canned food. I'm surviving, I'm gonna sail over everyone eating a fruit cocktail. <laughs> like that one last year, the, the, the Japan earthquake. Japan, they had the earthquake, the tsunami, then the nuclear plant melted down to the ground. Right, remember all the radiation blew across the Pacific and people were panicked like, I better get a face mask so I can stop the radiation. Yeah, that's brilliant, brilliant plan. Get that face mask to stop the radiation. <laughs> and then the government said, oh no, it's, it's low level radiation. Oh right, r low level radiation. Maybe I can glow in the dark for a while and find my keys at night with the lights off. <laughs> low level radiation. My body can't even handle milk. <laughs> I'm here, back again. I've, I've lived away for, for a couple of years and it's nice to be back in San Francisco because I, I tell jokes, you know, and that's, that's the economy's been kind of tough. And when you tell jokes, you are riding the cusp of it right there, man. <laughs> America's in trouble, right? Your, your credit's bad and Europe is on the brink of financial collapse. But the good news is Disney's gonna buy it for spare parts. So uh, it's gonna be a very small world pretty soon. <laughs> But I thought, what do I have to show for myself? I tell jokes, I make $6,000 a year doing this, right? I have some books, a few pairs of pants, and that's it. And I thought, man, I'm, I'm a loser. And um, yeah, it was sad. And then, and then I thought about it and I realized I'm not a loser, I've tried. I am a failure. <laughs> it's more poetic sounding. I'm joking, of course, I'm very successful by my standards. So, <laughs> hey, I'm here tonight and you guys are laughing. That's a, that's a win in the column right there. I've been on television, Woo! yeah, but late night television, there's a difference. If you have jobs, lives, friends, meaningful things to do, you've never seen me. Uh, if you have insomnia, an alcohol problem, if you've bought anything from an infomercial, I'm suddenly familiar to one or two of you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, on, I'm on TV in the middle of the night when it's, it, it's like infomercials and you know they're selling you vacuum hair cutters and food dehydrators. I've never needed food dried out. That never crops up in my life. I'm, I'm never in the kitchen. Damn it, this food is too wet and juicy. It taunts me with freshness and moisture. Can we not suck it dry somehow? They try to sell it to you. You can make beef jerky at home. Well, finally, the promise of jerky in abundance. I'm tired of having a carcass stretched out in the backyard waiting for a heat wave to get some jerky. <laughs> I've been on some late night talk shows. I was on the original Conan show, I was on the Craig Ferguson talk show. He's from Scotland, if you've seen that, and I was on there. A lot of accents for one hour in America. <laughs> People were confused, they thought it was PBS. <laughs> they were waiting on us to solve a murder. <laughs> I got to be on the David Letterman show. That's a big deal as a comic. You get to be on Letterman, man. I'm on there. There's always movie stars and celebrities. And I get there, I'm on with Al Gore. That's the show, me and Al Gore. Yes, everybody recorded that one, I'm sure. Um, I did really well. I'm not bragging or boasting. I'm gonna tell you this. If you wanna be hilarious on national television, have Al Gore go first. <laughs> You'll rock the house after Al Gore. He, he was my global warm-up, you might say, folks. But, uh, oh, anyway, well, uh, I'm going to keep this show going because we've got a lot of great, fantastic performers who are just excited to come up here because this is one of the best rooms to perform in, in the world, man, not only in San Francisco. What, what is great about it? Low ceilings, 
We're all in close together. You guys are right here. This is the connection. I, I love it. I, I, I haven't performed here in a while, and this has just been brilliant, and, and we've got a great show for you. And I can't say how proud I am to have been a part of the shows that we've done here, but we'll talk more about that. Uh, anyway, are you guys ready to kick this off and get some more great comedy? Thanks for coming out.